we are the family and friends of Marion Gould. Uh, Marion passed away on uh, July 7th uh, in Nico, Florida, and she survived by her son B and two daughters, Linda Swank and Molly Wood. And the Lord Service is going to be held at a later date in New York, uh, where she lived. Uh, a very special happy birthday goes to uh, Martha Schleicher, who is going to celebrate her birthday on uh, July 13th. She, wanted, she had some wild doings planned. She was going to go to Five Guys for a hot dog and then ice cream. She said that where she lives, they do not have good hot dogs. And she said Five Guys have really good hot dogs. So that was her, that was her excitement. So if you get a chance to drop a line from Margie or see her, you can ask her how she enjoyed her hot dog. Um, we do have a bunch of announcements in the bulletin on July 14th, which is coming this Tuesday, it's a trip to the Holiday World, um, there's a trip to the zoo, um, prime timers, all of those are listed in the bulletin. You have also in your bulletin really big, big news, something super and duper exciting is the Elephant Man will be starting next weekend from the 17th to the 19th and 24th of the 27th. All of the, um, all of the performances are going to be at eight o'clock in the chapel. The reservation, the general admission is only $10. This is a, this is a wonderful, wonderful play. I had the opportunity to see this on Broadway, and I cannot tell you how utterly excited I am. Um, and JR has worked endless and countless hours. So, JR, thank you so much for all the hours you've worked and the play you <coughs>
new equipment, we've, we've painted, we've added a new wall, there's just craziness going on up in the Sunday school area. And so uh, if you're a parent or a grandparent and want your child to be involved in our Sunday school program starting the fall in this really new curriculum, uh, then I invite you to come uh, and say after worship this coming Sunday and we'll learn a little about it, we'll have some pizza, we'll just find out some more info. So I invite you to come and find out about our new exciting Sunday school program that's going to start up in September. And while I have the mic and I'm up here, I am so thankful to be back uh, from our mission trip. I wasn't here last Sunday, but uh, I, I want to do just a public special thank you to Nick Scroggins, who helped me lead the mission trip, and Catherine Allmacher. Uh, without them, I would not have been able to do this amazing mission trip for our nine youth that went, and it was spectacular. Uh, we were going to do a presentation uh, in August to let you know uh, what all we did and what happened, but uh, Catherine and Nick were amazing, so I thank them very much.
Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place.
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Our scripture today will be delivered by the Reverend Dr. John E. Comenzo, entitled The Perfect Prayer.
formal to say. It was only spoken by chief priests on the highest of holy days. It is not, it is not a name that the average person would use. Because within Judaism, the name of God is so formal. Now, just to make sure there's no controversy in this, imagine one of the, the current president or his immediate predecessor walked into the room, into the sanctuary. How would we refer to them? Most of us would refer to them very politely. We would be very deferential. We would be very formal towards them. Not because we like them or dislike them, but because that would be the proper and polite way to approach them. It is how our parents raised us. And this is how the Jewish people responded to God and addressed God. So when they read the third commandment, do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, their reference point was saying, was using the name of God inappropriately or being too informal. Jesus used the word Abba, the word which means daddy. And this is really formal, really intimate. And for the average person who was outside of Christianity, probably almost blasphemous. Because people are not supposed to, at least in the eyes, of, in their eyes, of addressing God in such informality. The second thing that Jesus does is he reminds us of God's place and our place in the great scheme of things. How it be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There are three major biblical covenants. Abraham, I will be your God and you will be my people. Moses, here are the laws. And Jesus, the new and everlasting covenant. And Jesus hearkens us back with this prayer to that first covenant and the second covenant of being obedient to God, of doing God's will as opposed to our will. And whenever we say, God, we're doing God's will, we are saying that God has the capacity to say no. Imagine this. What would happen if God always said, yes, a person plays the lottery, and the lottery prize is for $10 million. And so the person prays, oh God, please let me win the lottery so I win $10 million. Because God always has to say yes, the person wins $10 million. They quit their job, and their friend, and the friends say, why did you quit your job? Because I prayed to God to win $10 million, and I did. So everybody in the workplace, praise to God, they all win $10 million. Business goes out of business. Everybody hears what they did. Suddenly, everybody in the country is playing the lottery, praise to God for $10 million. Even atheists are praying to God and Jesus. Word gets around. Everybody plays, everybody wins $10 million. Guess what? I don't know what your plans today with going out to lunch are, but all the restaurants are closed. Everyone has won $10 million and they're not going to serve you anymore. If you decide, okay, we'll go to the mall. The mall is closed. Who's going to work at Sears when you won $10 million? Your car breaks down. Tough. There's nobody to fix it. All the mechanics won $10 million. There's nobody there to sell you a new one because all the car viewers have won $10 million and their salespeople. Need surgery? Tough luck. Doctors have all won $10 million. Everything is now in cash because the banks can't open because no one works at the bank anymore because they've all won $10 million. The only people who are still working without $10 million are the ministers because we never read the lottery. <laughs> there is this Christian book that you might be interested in as well. It's a reality, though, that God is in charge. That God is in charge. And when we submit to God and say, Thy will be done, we are saying you have the capacity to say no, and recognizing sometimes no is the right answer. The third thing is this Jesus reminds us in this prayer and gives us the ability to pray to God to deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Evil exists. I hate saying those words, but evil exists. And our capacity for evil is amazing. Our capacity as human beings is for evil is amazing. Every Sunday we serve
hear the words, deliver us from evil. In our commission from Romans 12, we say, render to no one evil for evil. In Psalm 21, in Psalm 121, it's also a psalm that ends with, uh, with God keeping us from evil in our lives. Evil exists and it's a recurring theme. During World War II, amazingly civilized and advanced nation of Germany went absolutely crazy and murdered six million Jews and went to war. During World War I, the civilized and advanced country of Turkey murdered a hundred, one and a half million Armenians, pure evil. There was the reign of Stalin in the Soviet Union with untold numbers of millions of people who were killed. Oklahoma City, an ex-soldier blows up a truck near a building filled with people. Two brothers in Boston set a bomb off on Grand Street. Two friends in Columbine High School. One guy goes in and murders nine people in a Bible study. We like to think we would never be victims of evil, and I pray to God we aren't. We like to think that we could never do evil, but unfortunately, people's capacity for evil is amazing. Sometimes good people can make bad choices, and sometimes good people become evil. Evil exists. It is a sad reality, but it does. And so we pray. And this is why this prayer is so important. It reminds us of so many things. It reminds us of an intimate relationship with God, a relationship based on love and care. It reminds us of a God who has the capacity to, to do things and say no to us and say yes to us, but always tries to do things that are best for us. And it's a prayer that invites us to be delivered from evil. It tries to protect us from evil, whether our evil or the evil of others. I began saying, I began this sermon by saying this prayer is a perfect prayer. It is a prayer of putting ourselves in God's hands. It is a prayer of saying we love God as God loves us. It is a prayer of inviting God's protection. We often hurry through. We often rush. We know the words so well. Sometimes we know the words too well. But let us take time when we pray today. Take time to pray and save and embrace the words of this brother.
And help us always to bring others to you in prayer and love them as you love us. We also come today with joys. Yesterday was a nice day. And I say that with joy because it has become the exception to the rule. So I celebrate yesterday. And I pray that someday we'll have a recurrence of nice weather. You may or may not know it, but we are doing some remodeling upstairs in the education building, and a new a room was divided, and that work, the work, work is still being done, but that, a lot of that construction work got finished this week, so that's a celebration we have. Um, I'm really grateful for JR. Um, JR has been here countless hours um, working on so many things, directing and worrying about lighting and having sleepless nights, and um, I'm really grateful for you, Jared, so thank you. Um, so many people have been enjoying vacation. Um, I, I keep seeing on Facebook that all these people are at fun places, and so I'm celebrating with them. Is there anybody else who would like us to um, celebrate with joy today? Yes? Okay, Linda's friend Dar, uh, it was great for her brother, um, and he's doing that. Yes? The formation of Southern Indiana Colony. Formation of Southern Indiana Colony. And Hannah is the vice president. Yes? My great grandmother, Carol, she does, she broke her hip and her shoulder, and she's getting really better. Okay. Very good. So, Carol and Rice are greatly improved. Thank you. 
In your name. Love the Bible. 